What's up, YouTube? It's Mountain Metal Anthony here with a unique one for you today. I couldn't find any information on the internet, hardly. Only a couple of forums, stuff that dated back as far as 20 years, stuff that, you know, was dated back four years, but no definitive answers. I mean, a couple of things, a couple of places. So what I had to do was reach out and use every asset that I had to try to figure out how I was gonna weld this. And what this is, is cast iron to mild steel. It's not a cast iron repair. We're trying to join cast iron to mild steel. What I've already gone ahead and done is prepped this thing out, got it straight and square, and when I tap welded it with my MIG welder. Now, unfortunately, you can't just MIG weld this thing or stick weld it with any old rod. You have to use what's called Nickel 55. Um, after getting on the phone with the, the Lincoln representatives and asking them what rod would be best to join this 604510 is cast iron to this mild steel, um, they informed me that uh, the Nickel 55 rod is, is the best thing that I could use. So I went out and purchased that, but at a cost. That stuff is $59 a pound. I know, right? So you don't wanna go wasting this shit. I've already welded one of these C-clamps down to this, and you'll see this project in an upcoming video. It's just a lot longer, and it's going to take me a lot more editing. So this one's going to come out a lot sooner. So what we're going to go ahead and do is preheat most of this piece to 350. We're going to get it all warm, but we're going to mostly concentrate on getting this piece down here up to 350. And we're going to make sure that we're getting our temperatures right using one of these infrared temperature guns. We'll be heating it using our rosebud torch and of course using my Lincoln engine drive stick welder to go ahead and weld this out because I don't own any shop stick welders because why would I? There's other ways to do this. I've heard of guys knocking the flux off of these rods and TIG welding it, which is really good for temperature control. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and stick weld this thing out. I had some pretty good results on the last one. Not great. Definitely not my best welding ever. But as you'll see when I get my arc shot, this rod runs weird, and it, ru it runs super weird. I'm gonna run it pretty warm, probably gonna be about 135 amps. It's an eighth inch rod. Let's get to this. Now that we're done welding, we need to do a post heat. Um, we need to peen the welds, and then we need to get this thing into a fiberglass blanket to cool slowly. It's cold out today, which is not good for this. So I'm gonna set that up and let that sit while I find my peening hammer. I can't find it, but this will do the job. We're just going to knock the slag off, feed the well. The 
wells look good. They look better than my first one. And what the peening does is it releases stress. Get my gloves on. I know I should have my PPE, but you gotta work quick when you're working with this stuff. You can't delay. We don't need the ground on it anymore. Let's get that out of our way. Gotta work fast. You can't fuck around with this stuff. This one looks perfect too. So we got three really good ones, well, and one not so good. But that's okay. our fiberglass blanket to wrap it up good. Make sure it's airtight. Well, you know what I mean. I'm not going to get it 100% airtight, but just make sure that nothing's getting into this thing. You want to keep it as warm as you can for as long as you can, especially with today being such a, uh, such a cold day. All right. So there she sits. Here's our other one, didn't come out so hot. The customer was happy. He thought those were real good welds. I told him that those were not good welds. They were acceptable for what it is, but they're definitely not good. All right, guys, that's it. We got it sitting over here. You can see it's steaming over there. It's gonna cool down slowly now. This is the process I did with the other one. We were successful in not getting any cracks. Um, so I'm going to get to shooting the rest of this video for the uh, fabrication project I was doing this for. Um, this was a non-critical application. There's going to be no stress being put on these welds. It's just to make it so it has a, a way to stand up. That's all that's doing. And then we're going to weld a plate onto the bottom of that. If you're doing a critical application, it is possible to do. I would not suggest you do it outside, especially if it's cold out. A gust of wind could actually cause this thing to crack. But if you listen... You don't hear any pinning, do you? It's because I did it correctly. Um, if you start hearing popping or peening or that ding noise, um, that means you've done it incorrectly. That means you have cracks in your welds now. There are no cracks in mine. Luckily, we do have a spot of porosity. I'm not going to worry about it because, like I said, this is a non-critical application. Is it setting my fucking blanket on fire? I'm going to push this thing a little further outside and put a fan on it so the damn, or put a fan near it at least, so the fan, so the damn, man, that's some stinky shit. And that rod smells weird, runs weird, smells weird, hard to keep a puddle on. It's just overall a difficult thing to work with. As you can see, I got the fan facing that way, sucking the fumes out. It's uh, doing an okay job, not great. But you don't want to blow up, put the fan on this. You want to let this thing do its thing and cool down. All right, so it's been about three or four hours. Let's see what we got going on. All right, oh wow. Pretty good, pretty good, pretty impressive. All right, well, I'm happy with that. I gotta say guys, this is one of the most difficult welds I've ever made. Um, what I have learned is that you can join cast iron to mild steel using that nickel 55 rod. I heard you could use the nickel 99, which is 99% nickel, um, and that works even better, but that's twice as expensive. And at $59 a pack for the 55, I think I'm going to stick with the 55. All this is is going to be a stand. It's just to make the C flat. That's all it's to do is just to give it to a place to stand so my customer can use it for his project. All right, guys. If you enjoy what you saw here today, if you learned something, go ahead, like, subscribe, share. I know there's not a vid another video out there on how to weld cast iron to mild steel because I looked. Um, the only reason I could figure out how to do this was I called Lincoln. I looked on the internet for hours on end. I called the manufacturer to ask him if it was okay for me to weld this using the nickel 55 rod. Um, and I also made sure that I understood what type of material I was welding to. I know mild steel, but I don't know 60, 45, 10 cast iron. So I got all those facts out of the way. So before you weld anything cast iron to mild steel, get your facts.
Okay, don't just jump in and try to weld this stuff. If it's a non-critical application, there's other ways to do this. I've heard of people welding this 55 nickel rod to the bottom of these castings and then going ahead and welding your mild steel to where you welded with like 7018, like a low hydrogen rod. And that's a technique called buttering. Maybe another day we'll do a buttering video. But anyway, guys, I'm Metal Anthony. Keep dragging Ron. Keep pushing me. Keep doing what you do. Subscribe, like, share. Do the whole nine for me. And I'll catch you on the next one.